Hey guys, uh, Ollie here, welcome back to the channel. Slightly different video uh, for you all because today we are going to be thinking about jobs, that is, your first jobs as a doctor, applying for your first jobs when you get to the end of medical school and the time when you actually need to become a junior doctor. That is the process through which I'm going at the moment and I've not actually logged into the platform. We're now a week and a bit into the application system. Applications close on November the 4th. It's currently the 24th of October, so I've got a couple of weeks left. But what I thought would be useful for you guys, because I've never seen anyone talk about this, and it's something that a lot of people ask me about, how do you actually apply for jobs? How does the process work? Um, that's all done through this platform called Oriel, which I've never logged into before. So I figured it would be cool for us to explore it together and we can maybe see what that process is like. So the first thing that has to happen is your medical school has to nominate you uh, for provisional registration and to go through the system. So as a final year medical student, I now have this, I have my GMC number and the medical school has nominated me. I've accepted that and now I need to go and log in. So the question is which email has it used? Okay, that seems to be the right one, fine. So now it looks like it's asking me to actually register and fill in some personal details. So uh, bear with me because I should know the answers to all of these. So here we are, welcome. I've never seen this before. Um, so let's have a quick look. So Dashboard, you've selected the UK Foundation Programme. So the Foundation Programme, two years, of nationally selected generalist training that all junior doctors have to do. So I am at a little bit of a loss as to where to start. Uh, let's have a look on vacancies. Oh my God. So what's showing up here on the left hand side, what this is telling me is the different types of vacancy that I can apply for. So what we presumably have are 15 academic foundation schools, for the academic foundation program which all of these are. So we've got Cam East Anglia Cambridge, which is one of the ones that I um, might be applying to, Leicestershire, Northamptonshire, Wales, so on and so forth. So we've got 15 academic foundation schools. Then at the bottom, yes, we have the foundation programme and foundation priority programmes. So what most people will do is the foundation programme, and I will be applying to this myself. I'll make another video probably on how this all works. Uh, I will be putting in a foundation priority program application as well. And then for some reason, the, the AFP schools are listed separately. Where's Northern? Because that's the other one that I need to find. Oxford, Northern. Cool. So to keep things simple, let's open academic two-year work-based training program to bridge the gap between medical school and specialty or general practice. That seems consistent with what I know. Applications will be accepted from Monday the 19th and will close on Wednesday the 4th at midnight. Fantastic. So it's really only been open uh, for about five days. Applicants will have the option to submit a total of four application forms. This is really important. One standard FP, which is mandatory. Everyone has to do this. Up to two AFP applications and one FPP. Um, so... What this means is there is a hierarchy of, of job selection. So the AFP, FP and FPP are all two year programs um, and you can complete any of them in order to get your registration as a doctor. The vast majority of people will do the foundation program. That's why it's compulsory. Um, you can optionally apply for foundation priority program, which seeks to get people into either specialties or locations which are understaffed and they need to boost recruitment, often with perks or extra pay, things like that. And then the AFP, um, which sort of comes at the top of the selection hierarchy, is a competitive interview-based uh, two-year position, which gives you protected time for research, education, or improving your leadership skills. And I'm going to be applying for two of those posts. And for all of these, they all have their own application form. So let's view the application form for the foundation program and we can see that there's a load of headings across here so let's have a look through i'm not going to fill any of it out for you today but this is just to give myself a kind of look at how this process works and to illustrate to you guys uh, how it all works we've got obviously my contact information which they will need 
uh, eligibility. So eligibility, are you a student at UK medical school? Yes. And then are you a UK national? Yes. Criminal records and fitness to practice. I've never had a criminal record, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, references. So this is where you would ask uh, either a tutor, like a university tutor or a lecturer or someone that you know well, uh, to provide a reference for you. And it's important to note that references don't add anything to your job application in this sense. It's just to check, you know, are they safe? Are they decent? Do they fulfill the requirements uh, to the best of your knowledge? It's not a case of saying that this person's super great um, and they will be really good at this particular job. It doesn't work like that. It's just a check and balance, basically. They've got a consultant or a clinician that will back you up. They give some examples here. Uh, this might be a professor, senior lecturer, reader, or, you know, someone as advised by your medical school. So for me, that's going to be my clinical personal tutor. Uh, so yeah, here's our, our competencies. So all you need in order to be eligible for this program is to have a primary medical qualification. Uh, so that's going to all go in here. Employment. This page is left intentionally blank. You are not required to complete this page. Cool. Right. So when it comes to the standard foundation program, there are a couple of things that can add you some extra points. You get up to seven bonus points um, for your total application score, which is scored out of 100. Again, I'll make a dedicated video on this, so please keep an eye out for that. But you can get seven points out of 100 uh, for having an additional degree. So do you have an additional degree? So I could say yes. Um, I have a first class honours degree from my undergrad in molecular biology, which I could put in here. Place of study, Newcastle University, I qualified in 2017. And then you could put down here uh, two, two publications, uh, potentially. So do you have a peer reviewed publication with a PubMed ID? Do you have a second PubMed peer reviewed publication? And they would give you one point each. Now, at the time of writing, I will be applying with one publication, but it won't be in print uh, until after the deadline, which is very unfortunate. And this is a really common thing um, with doing research in medical school, particularly in graduate entry programs where they're only, they're only four years long. You basically can't do anything in the first year because the timetable is so ridiculous and you're doing your job application at the start of the final year. So you actually only have two years um, in order to get stuff done, which if you were in my position and you'd never really done research before at all, let alone get anything published, you're going to be up against the wire. And I've now got three, uh, three papers waiting to be published, but none of them are going to be published in time for the deadline, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, that page is left blank. Right, so preferences. This is one of the key things uh, to understand about how job selection works. So what we have to do is we have to choose what are called foundation schools or deaneries. The UK is split up into these different geographical areas where the jobs are divided up into. So you can see that we've got the Northern Deanery, which has 304 jobs spread out basically across the north and the northeast. We have the northwest, northwest London, north central and east London. London has the, the biggest like concentration of these geographical areas, but there are different numbers of jobs across the different deaneries. And you could look at a map that illustrates within the UK how these jobs are all split up. And all we have to do here, and basically all we would have to do here is drag these different deaneries into the, the order that I would like them, because it's the case that when selection comes, those that have the highest score out of 100 based on a national uh, situational judgment test that we will all sit, our relative performance in medical school, so how well you do relative to your cohort, and like I've said, these publications and an additional degree that you might have, those with the highest scores get allocated their highest rank jobs first. So the person with the highest rank or the highest overall score gets their top choice of job, then the second highest scoring person gets their highest choice in job, and, and so on. And it filters down until everyone has been allocated a place. And in order to get a job in the area that you want, so let's say you want to go and work in London, you would need to rank, say, Northern Central and East London or Northwest London at the top of this list. And you might put 
Yorkshire at the bottom or Wales at the bottom or somewhere where you didn't want to go for whatever reason. And then the last thing to look at here is is just your um, your relevant declarations uh, that you need to make. Just tick all the boxes and confirm that you're not a murderer or something. So then the other things we could quickly look at are the Academic Foundation program. So I'm wanting to apply to the Northern uh, the Northern Foundation School is my kind of top choice. So let's find that again. Has the no the order hasn't changed, has it? There's Oxford. So here's Northern. So this will have its own application form because AFPs are more competitive and as such their scoring systems are slightly different. So you can see here the AFP at the Northern Foundation School is run by Newcastle University and the Northern Foundation School. So that's where I did my undergrad degree, and it's part of the reason why I really want to go back. Uh, trainees on the AFP have one protected four-month academic rotation in F1 and the same in F2. So foundation programs are normally split into three four-month posts in F1 and three four-month posts in F2. Normally, you will do a mix of medicine, surgery, you might do a bit of psychiatry or dermatology or something, um, some specialties in there as well, but it's generalist training. In the AFP, the idea is that one of these rotations, or two in the case of the Northern Foundation School, is replaced by essentially personal development or research time. So say you're interested in surgery, like I am, you could spend one of your rotations doing some research specifically in surgery, or you could do one in one specialty and one in another in the Northern School if you were so interested. So let's have a look at the application form and you can see how it differs very slightly. So the personal stuff is the same, the eligibility is going to be the same, but you'll be able to see the main difference is to do with supporting evidence, um, which is probably going to be on the evidence page. Right, so this is very extensive and very different. You can see here, do you have any degrees other than your primary medical degree? Uh, so I only have one because I'm a pleb with only one additional degree. Uh, so let's say I have one. I have a first class honours, bachelor's of science degree in cellular and molecular biology even. So Newcastle University, I could give the date that I qualified. And this is obviously giving options for multiple additional degrees because you may have done an intercalated bachelor's degree and maybe a master's degree or you might have a PhD um, or something like that. What's important to note is that multiple degrees don't stack. You only get points for the highest degree. So usually a bachelor's is going to be worth three, a master's or a first class bachelor's is going to be worth four, and a PhD is going to be worth five. That's usually how this works. And you only get the points for whatever the highest scoring one is. So you couldn't say do multiple degrees to keep stacking your points. Um, even if you could, I would argue that the cost and time that that takes is probably not worth it. So then, uh, publications. I believe this has yeah space for up to 10 publications. Um, so you could have uh, papers, letters to editor, um, etc, etc, etc. But the difference is, is that these do not necessarily need to even be peer reviewed or have PubMed IDs. I believe they just have to be accepted for the Academic Foundation program, which will be helpful. So the next set is uh, presentations. Um, so if you've done conference presentations or poster presentations, of which I've done a few of each, you could uh, put them in here. So let's say I've done three or four oral presentations. I must have done three or four. And I've done two or three poster presentations. Uh, conferences, I can pop them all in here. And it says here, list all the authors in the same order as on the evidence with your name in capitals, because you have to provide certificates and evidence of all of these things. So there's probably, yeah, room for up to 10. And then prizes, distinctions and merits. So if you have achieved, um, you know, you've done very well in exams, for example, and you've gotten merits or distinctions, you've performed a lot better than your cohort, that's worth points. If you've won maybe an essay competition, like a national essay competition, um, that's worth putting on. Your medical school might award student selected prizes and things if you've done well in research, or if you present at a conference and you get uh, a poster prize or an oral presentation prize, 
you should put these on as well. There are lots of ways to get prizes. I think I've got a couple of merits uh, as well for my exam performances. So here is where you can put all those things on. And that is effectively the main difference with the AFP. And you can see here, you will be able to record details of two additional degrees, 10 presentations, 10 prizes, and 10 publications. So because the AFP is more competitive, they kind of want a lot more of you. And you've really, you've got the chance to shine and show what you're about uh, by, by putting things in here. And just the only other difference with the AFP is that unlike with the foundation program, where we were ranking however, 20 something uh, foundation schools, there are 15 academic schools and their applications are all slightly different. So that's why they appear as separate vacancies on here. And you can pick two. So I could say pick Cambridge here and Norfolk here and apply for both of those, but I can only apply for two. The foundation program, you're effectively applying to all of the deaneries at once uh, through a common process. And the last thing I want to look at is the foundation priority program. Uh, does it? Yes. Priority programs are specifically designed to attract and retain trainees in remote, rural and coastal geographies, under doctor geographies and shortage specialties uh, with psychiatry. And this is the other important thing. They also offer a range of incentives from experience in certain specialties uh, to financial incentives and additional educational opportunities. So that might be reduced working hours. It could be uh, pay enhancements, you might receive several thousand pounds more a year, or what I would be interested in, these additional educational opportunities, they will often provide you funding to do qualifications such as postgraduate certificates in leadership, in research, in medical education, and th that's a lot of money. You know, these things can be thousands of pounds. So if I was able to get onto an FPP um, that offered me a PG cert, I th honestly think I'd make that exchange uh, in exchange for that funding, even though I might be going somewhere that I didn't necessarily want to be, but you've got to play it by ear. Well, guys, I thought that would just be a an interesting little exploration of Oriel for the first time. I've never looked at it before, um, so this is just my kind of response to the system. Obviously, I've not put any of my details in yet, but if that's something that you guys would like to see... Um, but if that's something that you guys would like to see, please do let me know. Um, I can kind of go through the system and maybe do a long recording of filling it out just so you guys can see what that process is like. I really wish that I'd had this earlier on in the course that someone had kind of shown me this is how it's going to look and this is what you need to do. Particularly if you're thinking about something like the AFP, you can see how the application form looks. So if you've got any questions or concerns, please do let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in another video, uh, hopefully, when I've filled this out. Take care. See you next time.